Hello everyone, this is Stephanie at High Tower Stitching with today's video, which is number 190, and it's a great boxy quilt pattern for beginning quilters. And as I thought about what I wanted to work on and looked at my magazines, I was also thinking about my sister-in-law. She's just about ready to go on a trip with her husband to all the way to Minnesota. And he likes to do the driving, so she does the sewing while he's doing it. And she was trying to think of something that she hadn't done before that she'd like to do on their trip. And as I looked in the magazine, I found something that I thought was really nice. This quilt block is from The Love of Quilting, March 2019, and it's page 64. And the funny thing about it is, it's kind of deceptive. And that's why I tell you, always read over every part of the pattern before you start, because look how big that looks. Well, the fact was, when I looked at the backing, it only takes a yard and a half of backing material. So that means it's going to be a, a smaller quilt. Well, when I was thinking about hand stitching, I thought, oh, look at those blocks. That's going to be great. Well, they're not too little and they're not too big. And they're bigger than doing all of the two-inch blocks like we did before for the placemat. And so this is the one we're going to look at today. I want to show you my sample block. I want to show you the patches, and then I want to do some beginning stitching. So this is truly for someone who's starting to work on quilting. Here is the actual block that makes up the quilt. And the part that is the five inch block is this little piece in the center. It's got a three and a half inch square and these are one and a half inch wide, and I'm going to show you those in just a second. And then once you get that put together, then this outer border goes on and is used to connect it to the other blocks that you have. And it is really, it's really nice. When I looked at my materials, I thought, okay, well, I've got to have something in the center. That's sort of where I started from. And if, if you remember in hers, she had a bunch of different blues. This is a great way to use up some blue fabric if you have a lot of it, or even red fabric, anything. And then come out and make a lighter frame around there. And then I said, okay, now I've got to have some way to hook those small squares together. And I said, what's a color that's in there that's framey? And I saw that little bitty black in there because a darker gold wasn't going to help. And I don't think that a red would, but if I had tried it, I might have found out that it did. It's a lot of quilting is just trial and error and seeing what you like. And so I went with the black, and that's what I made that. And then you have posts. You have a post on each corner. And that's where I came back with that other gold that I found because I just really liked that. And I didn't want it to be, I could have, might have been in that red color again, but I there again, I didn't try it because I knew I liked that darker color to go with that. And so the, the materials that you're going to need are three and a half inch squares, that's for the center, one and a half by three and a half inch for one part of the frame, and then one and a half by five and a half and I'm going to go back and put a number on there because you, I think you'll see, though, that you'll need two for each side on that square. But to make this quilt that takes an one and a half yards, it takes 35 of the small squares that we're going to do. And so as I cut them out, and I was going to mix them up with different ones because I've really been doing some scrappy things lately, then... I pinned them together, and each section has got the three and a half inch, two one and a half by three and a half, and then the two one and a half by five and a half. So no matter where you wanted to sew, you'd have them put together, and you wouldn't have to figure out what was going to come next. 
All right, then to go up to the next frame that comes after that, and we're going to call it sashing because we're going to join the blocks together. You're going to need, like this one I use black. These are two inches wide and five and a half inches long. And then we have the posts, and the posts are two inches. They're two inch squares. I wanted to make sure it was still working. I knocked it over and had to set it up. So here is the first part of what we want to do because becoming a good hand quilter is a skill, but it's also very fun, a lot of fun and very restful. And I always use a thimble. When I first started out, I did not use a thimble. But as I got going and I'd make my hands kind of messy from poking them all the time, then I, they got tougher, but then I actually started going to using a thimble. So that's what you got there. My thimble didn't fit very well, so I have figured out to take some batting and wrap it around there, and it actually makes it feel really good. It's hard to buy a thimble that, that you like. Then the next thing, and I forgot my pencil, so I'm going to use a pen, but do not use a pen. These were the four parts we were going to need to put around the three and a half inch square. And I try not to buy much stuff to, to work with, but when I saw this that would help me to mark my one fourth inch after I've been sewing for many years, it just made my life so much easier. And so what you do is you take your four pieces that you're going to use, and you only have to do this on one side. And it doesn't matter which, well, I do it on the long side because that's what we're going to stitch first. And you set it down, and it's a half of an inch. And so you can set your line right there. And please don't use a, a pen like I'm doing. But you're going to take and want to make a line across there. And the finer... Uh, pen or I use mechanical pencil mechanical pencil that you uh, do will make a fine line and so you probably you wouldn't be able to see it on here so I take all four of them and I do it and I make my one fourth inch and then I check and see how that one fourth inch is looking as far as being a fourth of an inch and though I'm finding out that because I use this pen that it's actually a little bit wider than the one fourth. So instead of sticking to the line, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to stitch on the inside. All right, now the first ones that I did, and I set it on here to sew, and when I hold that up there, boy, I can, I can tell that is right on the money because I had something else like a mechanical pencil that made such a nice line. And you can see this was my goal because when I start doing it with the camera, sometimes it's hard for you to see it. But with this, what I wanted was a row of stitches that were nice, uniform, small. And the, and the smaller, you know, the better. They have a knot on the end, and then we just run the stitch back through over here on this end. And you can't see it on this side, but lots of times you can, you can look over and you really get a good idea about how you're doing. So I've got that one, that side done. I'm going to take and finger press, and that's a nice thing about this. If you need something to take with you, or you just want to sit and do it in front of the TV, you don't want to sit there with iron, just take and open it up and then just press it with your finger and that's a finger press and you can see what a nice thing it does when you get ready to press all of those usually are laying just like that and you just pressed your uh, seams either on the top or from the bottom on this particular one so let's take my next one that I'm going to do you're going to do both sides first and you'll see that makes sense because remember we had a piece that was three and a half and then we have the pieces that are five and a half 
and go up there on the top. And you say, well, that's not going to fit. Well, I haven't taken the other piece of the uh, seams out for both that and that. So I'm going to lay this on top of there. And this one is a little bit longer, and it would probably stay, but even when I was working on it, I went ahead and pinned it. And especially when you've got nice fabric and it wants to stick together and not slide around. But pinning it in case you have to walk away is great. And then you're going to need a needle. And this one, I really like it. And you, but you find eventually the one you like. But you're looking for something that's slender. This one's a little long. And after you sew for a while, you get to make using smaller and smaller needles. And then for thread, for piecing, when you're putting the patches together, it's called piecing. And I've doubled my thread so that you can see it as I go. But if you have a good, strong thread, and you can sort of do the won't break, you know it's not old, and you can tug a little gently on it, and it's not going anywhere, you can actually use a single thread, and that'll take up much uh, less room. But I've already knotted my thread at the end just by rolling it around my finger like a regular knot. And I'm going to be ready to start. And I'm going to start here on this end. And usually if the first one is, first couple of stitches are the ones that get you. And I've got my hand, my finger, my pointer on that hand, on my left hand, is going to do part of the work. And then my right hand is going to do the work with pushing the needle up and down and the back hand is going to help do it. So as I poke down I can feel my finger back there so I know I'm all the way through. It's just don't poke it hard. So then I'm going to take and turn it and drive it up and you can see the little piece of silver back there and you want to go down. If you can do this, if your needle is good enough, then you can get two stitches on there but you don't want to worry about that at first. At first, you just want to do one nice stitch and then come up from the bottom. One nice stitch, come up from the bottom. I really like doing this. I think I'm going to do this myself and make a nice project. Have fun picking those colors. And I'm going to run it now. I'm going to go all the way. And I can sort of gather it on there once you get experience. Or you already have some experience from being a sewer of other kind of things. Like clothes or things that you hand stitch. Then I'm going to run it all the way over. About four is what I could get on this needle. It's a little fatter. And I'm going to bring it this time. I'm going to come all the way to the end. Sometimes you're going to have patterns that you're not going to go all the way to the end. But on this one, that's no problem. It's, that's why it's so great for a beginner. And then straighten everything out. Make sure you've got that nice and smooth. And then I'm going to run it back one. And you can run it back another one if you want to. That's what I do instead of doing it in the same place because it makes it bulky. All right, and then we're going to cut that thread. And usually as soon as I cut the thread, I go ahead and knot it again because nothing's worse than picking up the needle and starting and you haven't got a knot in the end. So I'm going to take it there. Got it knotted. Just going to put it back on my holder. And I'm going to take this one, and again, I'm going to open it up and finger press. And now we've got the two sides done. All right. So now we're going to be looking at the longer one. And getting ready for this, I've already done part of the work here. And you can see I have my two sides. I have my top. And then I have finger pressed it. And every once in a while when you get ready to start working on it, you start there again. So now what you want to do is you want to come up. You're going to do the same thing, but now you can tell this one's pretty long. And even if it's a little longer than what you're working with, start one end, 
with it even with it being even and pin it and these are really big pins you do not have to use big pins like this I've just gotten where I like those all right now I want to show you this too if you have a long stretch instead of starting here and going over it's one extra step but you can actually come and start in the middle of your line and go down and up. Like I said, that first part so this is the tricky one. And I'll have my one knot in the middle. I'm going to trim that knot off later. Now, the thing is, I'm going to rest my hand on the table. Lots of times I'll rest it on my knee or I'll have a book on my knee. And I use that to help me move my needle even better when I'm hand stitching. My other hand's still on the bottom. I'm going to go in and up. Oh, yeah. There you go. Now, I've really got the control, and it makes it so smooth and even, and it goes through. If your thread knots up, just take and pull where the knot is and gently see if it won't work its way out. But remember, it's a knot. And if it's not a big, ugly thing, you can actually just leave it there and keep going because it's it's uh, in place. All right? But you could see how easy it was for me when I was able to put my hand. Then I just move my hand along. And I go up and down. Use that back hand. And it's not speed that you're working with, with unless you're doing a project you want to hurry up and get done. Uh, sewing is more just moving along, moving along, and getting it like you want it. Because that brings up another point. So now I did that part. That was so easy. Well, now I can take and turn it. And I've got my line. I can knot up. I can start, th start there with my knot and work my way through there. Either way, it sometimes you just get bored and it gives you a variety of, of ways to do it. And um, let's see, Matt, that made me think of, yes. If you, if you hold your fabric and just pull it just a little bit, you can tell how close your stitches are and if they're close enough because you can already tell that if you make big half inch stitches when you turn this that's what it's going to look like well and it matters what it matters what kind of a quilt you want to make you know if you're making one where you'd like to have the stitches nice and small or you're doing something that's going to look sort of uh, not necessarily old-fashioned, but just going to look different. You can do larger stitches. So anyway, now we've got the frame on there. Okay, I've got it on one side. That's what I need right now. You're going to take two of your black color fabrics. And just like we did the sides, we're pretending this one's finished. All right. You're going to take your bl black and you're going to lay it on this side. But now you see you don't have a line to follow. So you can just turn this over and draw your line across there. And now again, watch. Because usually that light black line is right off of the edge. And draw yourself a line. Because the closer you are to a fourth of an inch, um, the better everything's going to fit. It's like it's that way. All right. So now, once we get those sewn on, I'm going to come back to the original sample that I did. Okay. Here's the sides. These two right here. Then here with the five and a half and five and a half that I put on. And I've opened my seams. And this one I actually pressed one time. And a press is just to have your seams and then press, just set your iron on there to steam it. And don't, not doing a lot of ironing. 
because you don't want to distort your fabrics. So then, this is what we'd be looking at. And we'd say, well, really, we're going to be looking at, yeah, because we did those, all right? I'm going to do it this way because really, really the way you want to do is you want to sew the black to the top and the black to the bottom, and you'll see why. Because you want to hook your next block on, all right? And it's going to be over here. So you're going to take, and to make that connection, you're going to take one of your black strips, and you're going to sew a post on each end, one fourth inch, just like before. You're going to take and set this on the one. Let's see. I thought I made a lot of different pieces. Here it is. Let's do this one. Well, we're just going to go back. All right, so we're still here, and this is going to be laid on that side and sewn on. Now, here's what happens with your post. We're going to say that the black has been added to this edge over here and has been turned no, over to the top. Sorry, did it again because we want to use that sashing to join them. We're going to do the top, and we're going to lay it back. All right, and then this one is going to be sewn on there. Now, you see that corner. One of the things you want is you want those to come together. So, when I had that one on, I took this piece and I laid it where the other one was. I took a pin, I opened this side, and I saw, see this wasn't there then, that this is where it was going to come together. So I went up there and laid it on that piece and I actually put a pin in there so that these two would be in the same place. And then I did it on the other end also. And your material's got some give. So if you say, well, I made my seam too big and it's not going to work. If you're just gently, you take and open that seam up and lay it where you need it. Then as you work, you can stretch your material to get it to uh, the black to mix in the be right in the middle. Hope that helps on that part because this would be moved onto here. All right, and here's where the um, top and the side come together, and the other black piece would be on the top. And so this would actually go up there on that corner. But as you start putting it together, then you'll see it, and then the thing is to open this up and lay it where it needs to be, sew it on that piece, which is not there, and then you'll have it to go back over that way. And you'll do that on the top and the bottom, and that'll make it e easy. Then when you get your next one done, then you won't have another black on this side, okay? You'll just have your original block that looks like this. And you will have, this is when it gets kind of fun because it's not that long for everything. Now, if you remember, after we got the box made, we put in the top and the bottom, all right? So the, the black on the top and the bottom. So we would take that and put it on there 
and then I put this one on there, and that'll be ready to go. And the only one then that you have to do is another one of these, and it's going to go right over here on the right-hand side for that one, and it's going to work that all the way across there. You put your block with your black top and on the top and the bottom, and then you come back with your strip with your posts on it, and you stitch that. And when you get it, then you're going to have what we were looking at in the magazine. Let's, where did I put it? Okay, if you look back at the magazine, here was, here was our beginning square. That's three and a half inches. Then we put on this three and a half by one and a half, one and a half by three and a half on the sides. Then we came back and we put the long five and a half piece at the top. And then for the first one, you go ahead and you add your black and your black, and then your side and your side. So that's the whole first part right there, all right? Then you go ahead and you make your next one. And you put your black piece on the top and your black piece on the bottom. And it's ready to sew to the first one. And then you add on your post with a black and a post. And you're ready to start with your next one. And I think it said I, to get the one and a half um, yards for the smaller size, then it took 35 of those small five inch squares. This is Stephanie at High Tower Stitching. I did a lot and I hope that you got a lot out of it if you are just starting. You just need to be patient. You need to give yourself room to make mistakes, to take and cut out something if you want to or unthread it and start over. Even at the beginning, I'm gonna tell you if it, if it just gets on your nerves, just Put that one in the trash can and look for something else or start again. And have fun picking your colors and doing your sewing. Time codes have now added to the description, if that, so that may help if you're trying to find some part. Any notes I have will be added to the description. If this was helpful or fun for you or maybe helps you want to sew, please subscribe and hit like. And thank you for leaving any comments. It's nice to know you were here.